Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. Hello everybody. Uh, in the last class we had done Act 3 Scene 1 and there were a few questions that I had asked you. I think there was only one question that I asked you. It was why did Shylock hate Antonio? It had two marks and uh, first uh, Tanisha has answered it and to my pleasure I'm very happy that not just Tanisha has answered this question but also Gauri Gupta and also Shama Azmi. Both of you have answered and uh, first of all, let me tell you what the answer would be. There are a number of points. You see number of marks allotted over here is two. So accordingly, you give four small points or two big points. So first of all, you can say that Shylock, that Antonio used to, humi uh, used to embarrass and humiliate Shylock in the Rialto, okay, by giving out money without charging interest to anybody and everybody who wanted money he also brought down the rate of usans or the rate of interest that was the main dealing of shylock and you can also say that he heated his enemies and cooled his friends you can say these points as well and he also spat on his jewish gabardine you remember he also insulted the or uh, he insulted the religion of the uh, of Shylock and his people that means the Jewish religion Antonio also humiliated and insulted the religion of the Jewish people okay so these are the very many points that you can write and as the marks are only two so you can choose whichever four points you want to write from here okay so many of you have answered I'm very happy and uh, now today uh, as I had promised we will do angel in disguise and let's start with it okay so we will start an angel in disguise today. It is written by Timothy Arthur. Uh, he was, uh, his birth year was 1809 till 1885. So let's begin. It is a very easy story. You will all like it. I am sure of it. And one more thing is that you need to feel how the parents or how a person feels. You have to, you have to dig deep into your emotions to understand this story okay let's begin idleness that means when you are doing nothing when you are just sitting idly not doing anything worthy vice vice means when you are doing something immoral or unethical that you should not do and intemperance intemperance means when you drink, when somebody drinks too much, it is called intemperance. You do not have a proper life. You drink a lot of alcohol. That is intemperance. Had done their miserable work. So idleness, vice and intemperance. These were the three things for which the, the mother, the mother of the three children dies. Okay. She lies cold and still amid her wretched children. That means she was already poor. She used to drink a lot and that was the reason why she died very early, leaving behind her three children. She had fallen upon the threshold. This is a new word. What is a threshold? See, here is a picture. Threshold is this particular place which you need to cross as you enter or leave your room or house. This is the threshold, the raised portion, okay, the platform kind of a thing. So, she had just fallen flat on the threshold because she is dead of her own door in a drunken state she was in a drunken fit that means she was in a very drunken state okay she has drunk she had drunk a lot of um, wine maybe uh, alcohol some kind of alcohol and she died in the presence of her frightened little ones so she just came she tried to come inside the house or something like that and she falls flat on this threshold and dies over there only okay so now the three children they they have nobody to look after them okay death touches the spring of our common humanity what does this line mean death touches the spring of our common humanity when a person dies then what happens is maybe you did not like that person a lot maybe you always insulted that person or you hated that person extremely when that person will die you will feel some kind of a sorrow for that person you will feel sorry for that person okay so this is what happens when a person dies you feel that uh, i might have been wrong in hating him in that way it must be not correct the way i behaved with him so this is the 
thing that happens when a person dies the humanity within you starts developing this woman had been had been despised that means this woman the drunken woman the woman who always used to drink a lot he was despised that means he was hated a lot scoffed at people made fun of her why because she did not do a proper work she was always in a drunken state she did not take care of her children maybe so and angrily denounced that means he was she was critically she was criticized publicly everybody spoke bad about her publicly to one another they spoke bad about her among each other by nearly every man woman and child in the village so everybody in that village was aware that she was not a good lady and they hated him extremely but now as the fact of her death was passed from lip to lip in subdued tones pity took the place of anger and sorrow of denunciation so what denunciation means the public criticism they did not like the lady they hated her they spoke bad about her but as they came to know that this person is dead okay they feel they start feeling sorry for her okay neighbors went hastily so the neighbors the people living around her house they went to the old tumble down hut so they this is the state of the hut where she lived see this is the hut ramshackle hut which means completely in a broken state okay very poor people li live in this kind of house so it was a completely tumble down or broken hut in which she had secured little more than a place of shelter from summer heats and winter cold so she could barely save herself from the winter cold and the summer heat because the house was completely almost in a broken state so how will somebody save herself from the summer heat and the winter rain isn't winter cold so it was very difficult and a very the the condition of the house was extremely poor next some with grave clothes for a decent inter interment means the burial of the body you see when a person dies she or he is buried okay so for the burial some people some neighbors brought her grave clothes that would be that the woman would wear before being uh, buried okay and some with food for the half starving children so the children were already very poor the family was poor so the children did not have anything to eat now the mother has died so some of the people brought food for them three in number so how many children were there there were three children of these john the oldest a boy of 12 was a stout lad so the three children the first one was john this john was the oldest that means the elder one and he was 12 years old and he was a stout lad that means he was a very strong kind of a boy able to earn his living with any far farmer so farmer's work is a difficult work so they need to work hard so this kind of a boy who was very strong like john could help the could, could help any far farmer in uh, earning a living okay so kate between 10 and 11 was bright and active girl so the the second child was kate she is a young girl and she was between 10 and 11 years age she was bright very active and she was an energetic kind of a girl and uh, out of whom something clever might be made so if anybody could uh, you know you could could nurture her skills properly then something uh, good could be made out of this girl she was a very energetic and bright girl if in good hands so if the if the girl could be in good hands if the girl could have a good caretaker of her then she could be she could be made into a very good human being or or she could be uh, educated well okay because she was active and intelligent and all that but poor little maggie the youngest the youngest name was maggie was hopelessly diseased this was a problem that the little child that is maggie the little girl she was diseased she had a kind of she was suffering from a disease and she was sick two years before a fall from the window had injured her spine you know the spine the spinal cord that you have at your back so that part was disfigured or that was injured when he had fallen down when she had fallen down from a window and she had not been able to leave her bed since except when lifted in the arms of her mother she could not leave the bed naturally if your spine is hurt then you cannot move properly so she just could lay down and she could be lifted only by the arms of her mother 
her mother could would help her in uh, going to the washroom or taking her food there was nobody other than her to help her what is to be done with the children now that was the chief question that was the main question that the mother is dead the dead mother would go underground and be forever beyond all care or concern of the villagers but the children must not be left to starve so now the mother is dead she is no longer to be worried about but the problem is the children are living now they cannot be left to starve okay after considering the matter and talking it over with his wife farmer jones said he would take john and do well by him now that his mother was out of the way so now this one is the person farmer jones he is a very you know shrewd person very clever he is he is a farmer he thinks that if he can take john away and john could be helpful in his work he is a farmer and it is already said in the story that john is a very healthy and strong boy he can help farmer jones in farming so he takes him away and mrs ellis who had been looking out for a bound girl what do you mean by bound girl she was looking for a servant so she thinks that okay fine i was already looking for a servant and concluded that it would be charitable he said that she said that okay i will take away kate uh, i will take away the little girl katie and that is a kind of charity also i will take care of the girl and so she decides to take away katie even though she was too young to be of much use for several years although she was a very young girl she could not maybe work so much as a servant still uh, mrs ellis decided that she would take away kitty okay now from here you could you can very well understand what would be the scenario soon after the farmer and mrs ellis obviously they are not going to take them away and keep them in their house and treat them like their children isn't it they are going to make these two children work very hard for them they are taking them not for the sake of the children not for not out of love to take care of these children but because they want they have to serve their own selfish purpose isn't it they are taking them one to treat them to treat the girl as a servant and second to treat, to make the boy work in the farming land okay they are not going to maybe educate him or treat him very well or give him a lot of food and care no they are going to make them work a lot okay maybe treat them as servants i could do much better i know said mr ellis but as no one seems inclined to take her i must act from a sense of duty except to have trouble with the child for she is an undisciplined thing used to having her own way so mrs ellis says that okay i know that she is a very you know trouble maker she she will create a lot of nuisance in the family but then also i will take this child this is this child is very indisciplined she does she would not listen to me a lot but then also i will take her out of a sense of duty is this really a sense of duty no this is not a sense of duty she is taking the child for her own selfish purpose she wants to treat her like a servant next but no one said i will take maggy now if they were taking the children out of care then they would have taken maggy at the first instance isn't it because maggy needed the most amount of care because she was crippled she was diseased so you find that there is nobody to take care of maggy pitying glances were cast on her wan and wasted form and thoughts were troubled on her account mothers brought cast off garments and removing her soiled and ragged clothes dressed her in a clean attire you see they they were pitying glances people were feeling sorry for her they were feeling that what would happen to maggie okay they were looking at her wan and wasted form wan and wasted form means her weak and thin body they were looking at her and were troubled on her account that what would happen to her who will feed her what did the mothers do the mothers brought cast off garments and removing her soiled and ragged clothes dressed her in clean attire attire means dress so mothers brought their uh, few dresses so that they could give it to the child so that she could wear it and removed all the you know soil that means all the dirty clothes she was wearing they removed it and made him wear made her wear the clean dress the sad eyes and patient face of the little one touched many hearts and even knocked at them for entrance so people felt sorry for maggie people felt sad that it may so happen that this little girl will die out of hunger what will she do in this place everybody was worried but 
none opened to take her in there was nobody who could take this risk or take this responsibility to take care of the little child who wanted a bedridden child so they were all thinking that what will we do with this child he she is completely bedridden she cannot even get up uh, of from her bed on her own she needs to she needs to have somebody to take care of her all this who will do that for her so nobody takes care of no nobody decides to take maggie away take her to the poor house what is a poor house poor house is a place where very poor people were sent they used to work over there and uh, in return of that they were fed and they were kept in that place so one of them said a rough man said that uh, you take her to the poor house keep her at the poor house now imagine what is to be done with maggie was asked nobody is going to be bothered with her see imagine the situation this girl would be left at the poor house and in the poor house if somebody does not work properly or uh, somebody does not cooperate then no food would be given to her nobody would be there to take care of her now what will happen to maggie she will die over there okay next the poor house is a sad place for a sick and helpless child so one of the people standing over there he said correctly that in in a poor house there is nobody there to take care of a sick and helpless child all of them are doing some of the other work to be fed so who will take care of this poor and diseased child for your child or mine said the other lightly speaking but for this brat it will prove a blessed change so now this man is very cruel he says that see for your child or my child a poor house would be a bad place but this child this child was already living in a hell isn't it she was living in a wretched house was living in a broken down house with a drunken mother so if he goes if she is left in the poor house at least she would have a better life than this and it would be naturally a blessed change for her she will be kept clean have healthy food and be doctored which is more than can be said of her past condition in the recent years in the recent past when she was living with her mother she was they were so poor it might so have happened that she did not get a doctor to visit her she did not get proper food or did not bath properly so if she goes to the poor house then she will get healthy food she will be kept clean then she would be a doctor would visit her and treat her and that would be far better for her there was reason in that but still it didn't satisfy see obviously that is good but it will not satisfy if there is nobody to take just take the child to the bathroom even then what will happen to this child this child needs constant care so who will do that in the poor house the day following the day of death was made the day of burial so after the day of death the next day was the day of burial when the body was taken and it was cremated a few neighbors were at the miserable hovel so there were few people the neighbors who lives around his around her house they were in front they gathered in front of the miserable hovel hovel means the dirty house this one in which the uh, the woman lived so they came in front of the house but none followed the dead cart as it bore the unhonored remains to its proper grave proper means the poor woman's grave so although these people had come in front of the woman's house they did not go with her body to the cremation ground they did not go to the grave farmer jones after the coffin was taken out as soon as the coffin was taken out from this house immediately placed john in his wagon what is wagon you remember the have you seen those big sized uh, you have those wheels that is used that is a kind of uh, transportation okay so he puts john in his wagon and this is a wagon i have a picture of this is a wagon so as soon as the body was taken away as soon as the mother's body was taken away the the children were not allowed even to weep for long he was taken in his wagon and they leaves okay and drove away satisfied that he had done his part so now this john is very much satisfied that jones farmer jones he is very much satisfied that okay i am happy that i could do something but in reality he was he was selfish he had taken the boy away just for his own purpose mrs ellis spoke to kate with a hurried air bid your sister goodbye and drew the tearful children apart air means before scarcely their lips touched in a sobbing farewell so now 
the boy is gone the two girls were remaining kate and maggie so as soon as the boy leaves mrs ellis says that katie now let's move we are we are done over here so she just takes forcefully the child away from her little sister without even and they could not even bid a proper farewell okay before leaving next maybe the the this child kate used to take care of the young girl if she was left over here she could have taken care of a little sister but mrs ellis takes the girl away for her own purpose without even thinking what would happen to the crippled child hastily others went out some glancing at maggie and some resolutely refraining from a look until all had gone she was alone now what happens hastily that means very fast everybody leaves the place because they don't want to face maggie they are afraid that would be a consciousness that would hurt, that would try and hurt them that why are you leaving this crippled child over here so they did not want to face their conscience and they leave the place immediately some resolutely means they firmly refrain refrain means avoided from a look they did not want to look at the girl even until all had gone so they left now she is all alone maggie is all alone just imagine a girl who cannot even sit or get up or stand or go to the washroom even on her own imagine her condition all alone in that house just beyond the threshold joe thompson the wheelwright who is a wheelwright a person who repairs the wheels okay so now this person was just outside the house of that lady paused and said to the blacksmith's wife who was hastening away hastening off with the rest so there was a blacksmith's wife who was running away from the house of the woman because she did not want to uh, take care of maggie she was running away from that house and as she was hastening off with the rest as she was running away from the house this joe thompson okay the will right he asks her it is a cruel thing to leave her so now this is a very bad thing you are leaving this crippled child in this house joe thompson asks the uh, the blacksmith's wife now see who is a uh, this will write you will have this picture I, i have brought this picture for you over here this is a person who repairs these wheels okay this 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 is the cart wheels these wheels okay he repairs the wheels then take her to the poor house so the blacksmith's wife tells joe thompson that okay then if you are so worried you take her to the poor house na she'll have to go there anyway she has to go there answered the blacksmith's wife springing away and leaving joe behind so she just runs away from there she is not bothered to take care of maggie when joe thompson asks her what will happen to maggie then she says that okay you take her to the poor house that is the place where she has to be for a little while the man stood with a puzzled air so joe thompson could not understand what he should do then he turned back and went into the hovel so he went inside the house maggie with painful effort had raised herself to an upright position so with a lot of difficulty maggie has tried to sit in a in some somewhat of a of an upright position she was sitting on the bed straining her eyes upon the door she cannot stand up and see or request somebody to take her home take her to his or her home so she just tries to peep outside the door from her bed itself so straining her eyes upon the door out of which she had all had just departed now everybody has left she was worried she was looking out of the door if any kind of help would come a vague terror had come into her thin white face so she was very afraid my mother is not there imagine a, a situation when your mother is not there nobody you know is there in front of you or with you you'll be afraid and look at this child she cannot even stand or sit uh, on her own oh mr thompson she cried out catching her suspended breath don't leave me here alone so she requests mr thompson that please don't leave me here and go please don't do that then what will happen to me though rough in exterior joe thompson the wheelwright had a heart and it was very ten- tender in some places so joe thompson was the wheelwright but she but he also had a very soft heart okay he liked children and was he was very fond of children and was pleased to have them come to his shop where sleds and wagons were made or mended for the village lads without lad means boys without a draft on their hooded sixpences so this wheelwright that is joe thompson was a very soft hearted person 
whenever little boys came to his shop to repair a wheel she did he did not take much money from them what is a sled sleds you see wagons have already shown you sleds you have seen uh, santa claus coming in a sled isn't it so this is the sled this is called a sled over rice this is used to move okay no dear he answered in a kind voice going to the bed and stooping down over the child so he assures the child that no i am not leaving you you shan't be left here alone then he wrapped her with the gentleness almost of a woman in the clean bed clothes which some neighbor had brought and lifting her in his strong arms bore her out into the air and across the field that lay between the hovel and his home so what did jo thompson do he assures the child that nobody is going to leave you at least i am not going to leave you he goes close to the bed raises the child up very so very you know carefully and then he takes the child to his own home now jo thompson's wife who happened to be childless was not a woman of saintly temper was not a woman of saintly temper means this woman was a very angry woman with a very short temper she did not have a child or she did not have anybody to care for and she had become a very you know very cruel and very uh, short tempered young uh, short tempered lady nor much given to self denial for others good she did not think good about others she was very selfish also and jo had well grounded doubts touching the manner of greeting he should receive on his arrival so jo thompson was also very sure that as soon as he gets inside his house this woman that is his wife is going to treat him very badly he is going to be she is going to be very angry when she sees the crippled child with jo thompson now this is the picture of a woman who is extremely angry with a facial expression like that when she sees something that she does not like mrs thompson saw him approaching from the window and with ruffling feathers that means with a very irritated look mrs jo thompson that is mrs thompson had already seen her husband coming from the window so now with a very irritated look he meets him of she meets him a few paces from the door so just before entering just when jo thompson was outside he she looks at her husband as he opened the garden gate and came in he bore a precious burden this part is important why is it called a precious burden see obviously a child is a responsibility but when a when a family when a husband and a wife has gives birth to a child gives birth to a young one it is obviously a responsibility they are taking the responsibility but they also know that it is a very precious responsibility and they have to take good care of it okay so in the same manner jo thompson felt that the little little child maggie was kind of a very precious responsibility that he needed to carry out okay and he felt it to be so as his arms held the sick child to his breast a sphere of tenderness went out from her and penetrated his feelings you see the the man was holding the child very close to his heart he could feel that some kind of a connection was growing between them between maggie and jo thompson he felt that a, a a kind of feeling had got out a tenderness a softness had got out of the child and had entered into the heart of jo thompson a bond this was a kind of a bond that had already been corded this already tied between both of them and love was springing into life there was love there was there was a feeling for one another that was already growing what have you there sharply questioned mrs thompson now mrs thompson was very angry she had already seen the child jo felt the child start and shrink against him start and shrink means the child because the woman shouted so loudly the little child became afraid he did not reply except by a look that was pleading and cautionary that said wait a moment for explanations and be gentle so the man did not say anything but her his eyes tried to explain to the woman to his wife that please be calm please wait for wait so that i can explain you what had happened try to be kind and gentle and passing in carried maggie to the small chamber on the first floor and laid her on the bed so he carries little child to the small chamber and on the first floor and puts her on the bed okay now here is a picture so that you can understand then stepping back he shut the door he stood face to face now he comes down he closes the door 
behind her, him and then he comes to his wife he has to talk with his vinegar tempered wife his wife is extremely angry because her husband has brought a crippled child inside the house you haven't brought home that sick brat so she suddenly starts shouting now you have brought that sick diseased child to our house for what anger and astonishment were in the tones of mrs jo thompson her face was in a flame she was extremely angry she said that my goodness you have brought this diseased child in our house i think women's hearts are sometimes very hard said jo so now jo feels that why are women so cruel now this child is sick and she has nobody to take care of her that is why i brought her why is my wife even even when she is a woman herself behaves in such a cruel manner usually jo thompson got out of his wife's way or kept rigidly silent and non combative when she fired up on any subject so normally what happened was whenever his wife started shouting so started fighting with him he did not utter a word he was very silent and calm it was with some surprise therefore that she now encountered a firmly set countenance and a resolute pair of eyes now this is the first time or or maybe after a long time that jo thompson's wife sees her husband in a different mood her husband is no more silent no more quiet or calm he is trying he is rebellious he has a firmly set countenance a facial expression very firm very rigid that no i have to take care of this young girl and why being my wife why are you protesting why are you so cruel women's hearts are not half so hard as men's so naturally the 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 wife she says that no women's heart are not as hard as men's men's hearts are more you know more cruel jo saw by a quick intuition intuition means sixth sense that his resolute bearing had impressed his wife and he answered quickly and with real indignation so now jo thompson understood that okay i have behaved in a very firm way with my wife now wife, my wife is going to listen to it be that as it may every woman at the funeral turned her eyes steadily from the sick child's face now he goes on explaining that in the funeral i found that all the women had left they were not bothered about this sick child and left her alone in that old hut with the sun not an hour in the sky so the the sun was setting it was already evening by then and nobody none of the women who were present over there were bothered to take care of this sick child where were john and kate asked mrs thompson so she asked they all know each other isn't it they are neighbors so she asked that where was his brother and sister john and kate farmer jones tossed john into his wagon and drove off Katy went home with Mrs Ellis but nobody wanted the poor sick one send her to the poor house was the cry so he explains everything that had happened in the uh, in that place in that in in front of the house he says that farmer jones took away john and katy was taken away by mrs ellis and they all suggested that the sick child should be sent to the poor house so as soon as she comes to know about the poor house she says why didn't you let her go then what did you bring her here for she can't walk to the poor house said jo somebody's arms must carry her and mine are strong enough for that task so she immediately asks so why didn't you let her be at the poor house why didn't you do that why did you carry the child here so jo jo uh, jo thompson replies that see she can't walk by herself to the poor house she is crippled so somebody must carry her and i felt i could carry her so i have brought her brought her here then why didn't you keep on then why didn't you directly go to the poor house his wife asked why did you stop here demanded the wife why did you instead of going to the poor house why did you come to your own house because i am not apt to go on fools errands see i am not interested in doing stupid stuffs now the guardians must first be seen and a permit obtained anybody cannot be kept in the poor house isn't it there has to be a proper registration they have they had the names have to be filled up and you need to meet the guardians of the poor house so for this purpose you need to go in the morning now it is already evening there is nobody to do this work over there that is why i have brought the child over here there was no gain saying this now you cannot gain say it or you cannot deny this this uh, this excuse isn't it that in the evening how can you take her to the poor house there would be nobody over there to do the registration and all that 
when will you see the guardians was asked with irresponsible with irrepressible impatience now the woman was extremely impatient that when the child will go from my house i am not interested in this child i want to see her gone so when i so he she asks when are you going to see the guardians tomorrow why put it off till tomorrow go at once for the permit and get the whole thing off your hands tonight so she says no 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 don't have to wait till tomorrow just go now and make the permit and leave her there jane said the wheelwright with an impressiveness of tone that greatly subdued his wife i read in the bible now now joe thompson tells something to his wife i have read in the bible sometimes and find much said about little children how the savior rebuked the disciples who would not receive them how he took them up in his arms and blessed them and how he said that whosoever gave them even a cup of cold water should not go unrewarded so the savior the even god was very careful was very you know was very uh, was fe- felt a lot of uh, blessed the people who had a lot of feelings for the children he he had once scolded his disciples he had once scolded the followers because they did not take care of the children so whoever would take care of the children and give them a little bit of water also even a cup of cold water that would be rewarded by god himself okay now it is a very small thing for us to keep this poor motherless little one for a single night so joe thompson says that see god also blesses that person who takes care of children so for one single night can't we keep this little crippled one in our house to be kind to her for a single night can't we be a little bit of kind to be a little bit kinder to her for just for a single night tomorrow morning only i leave her to the poor house to make her life comfortable for a single night just for one night we can make her life a bit comfortable in our house the voice of the strong rough man shook and he turned his head away so shook means the the voice shook that means while saying while explaining this to his wife jo thompson's voice was shaking she he was almost crying trying to explain his wife that for one single night don't be so cruel so that the moisture in his eyes might not be seen so he was crying he was he had so much of love and care for the child that he felt bad that his wife was being so cruel it made her made him cry mrs thompson did not answer but a soft feeling crept into her heart look at her kindly jane speak to her kindly said jo think of her dead mother and the loneliness the pain the sorrow that must be on all her coming life so he she uh, jo thompson tells his wife jane that try to think the condition his life would be the situa- the problems that sh- she is soon going to face her coming life would have only problems so one night we can make that one particular night beautiful for her just for one night the softness of his heart gave unwanted eloquence so as he felt so much of love for this little girl it gave him an unusual ability to speak very well okay he could bring out his feelings through his words mrs thompson did not reply but presently turned towards the little chamber where her husband had deposited maggie so she did not his wife did not say anything but she turned towards that room where the little child was and pushing open the door went quietly in so she did not say anything but she went into the room of maggie jo did not follow he saw that her state had changed and felt that it would be best to leave her alone with the child so the husband also did not say anything he felt that okay let me leave these two people alone so that they can develop a kind of relation between each other so he went to his shop which stood near the house and walked until dusky evening so Uh, he went to his workplace he walked over there and finally uh, in the evening he was released from labor his work was done now he was returning a light shining through the little chamber windows was the first object that attracted joe's attention on turning towards the house so while he was coming to the house he found see this picture he found that there was a single window that was open and there was light okay so uh, as i was telling you he could see the window okay that was there was a light shining from the window now uh, 
it was a good omen so he felt that this might be a good sign that there was a window and it was it was lighted and that chamber of the little girl it was lighted maybe uh, there was some light in the house there must be some good thing happening in the house maybe both of them were communicating with each other the path led him by this window and when opposite he could not help pausing to look in so he was outside the house and he wanted to look in what was happening inside the inside that particular room so he peeped in it was now dark enough outside to screen him from observation so it was dark outside so nobody could see what who was standing outside and listening or watching so he hid there and tried to see what was happening inside maggie lay a little raised on the pillow with the lamp shining full upon her face so inside the room maggie was sitting on the pillow on a raised pillow and there was a lamp in the room mrs thompson was sitting by the bed talking to the child mrs thompson was talking to that little child but her back was towards the window so how were they talking one was facing towards the window and the one opposite to the window who was facing towards the window maggie so joe could see the face of maggie but could not see the face of his wife from maggie's face therefore joe must read the character of their intercourse now by seeing maggie's face joe had to understand what kind of communication was going between them was going on between them okay he saw that her eyes were intently fixed upon his wife that means maggie was looking at his wife and that now and then a few words came as if in answers from her lips that her expression was sad and tender but he saw nothing of bitterness or pain so there was nothing there there was no sign that his wife was scolding her or saying something bad to her insulting her there was pain but there was no uh, there was sadness okay uh, but he saw nothing of that bitterness or pain that if when somebody insults you you feel that pain isn't it there was nothing of that sort a deep drawn breath was followed by one of relief as a weight lifted itself from his heart so he was finally satisfied he took a deep breath my goodness now my wife is okay with the child on entering joe did not go immediately to the little chamber his heavy tread that means his footsteps about the kitchen so he was walking around the kitchen and his wife could hear that and he came hurriedly she came hurriedly from the room where she had been with maggie she was spending her time with maggie now she hears that her husband has come so she comes out jo thought it best not to refer to the child not to manifest any concern regard to her so he did not utter a word about the girl how soon will supper be ready he asked right soon so he said that okay fine i will have supper and supper would be ready soon beginning to bustle about that means she became busy in preparing the dinner there was no asperity asperity means there was no harshness in her voice so she was no more behaving in a very rude way that she normally behaves after washing from his hands and face the dust and soil of work joe left the kitchen and went to the little bedroom so he was he is a wheel right so obviously his hands would be filled with dust and dirt so now he washes off his hands and goes into the bedroom of maggie a pair of large bright eyes looked up at him from the snowy bed looked at him tenderly gratefully pleadingly so she was extremely thankful maggie was extremely thankful that uh, joe thompson had brought her to her to his house how his heart heart swelled in his bosom so he was very satisfied when he could see the love in the eyes of the little girl with what a quicker motion came the heart beats jo sat down and now for the first time examining the thin frame carefully under the lamp light saw that it was an attractive face and full of a childish sweetness which suffering had not been able to obliterate obliterate means destroy that means although the child suffered a lot she was not fed properly she used to be hungry throughout she did not have proper dress also proper care also she did not get even then her face had a kind of beauty it had a very attractive face she had okay it had a very childish sweetness about her your name is maggie he said as he sat down and took her soft little hand in his now they started talking jo thompson and maggie he asked is your name maggie yes sir her voice struck a chord that quivered in a low strain of music that means her voice was also extremely sweet when she talked it was just like music 
Have you been sick long? Have you been suffering for a long time? Yes, sir. What a sweet patience was in her tone. Has the doctor been to see you? That means, did you uh, did the doctor see you? He used to come, but not lately. No, sir. Have you any pain? Sometimes, but not now. When had you pain? This morning, my side ached and my back hurt when you carried me. So, Joe Thompson lifted the child, isn't it? So that time, his her spine was hurt, so it pained. It hurts you to be lifted or moved about. Yes, sir. Your side doesn't ache now. No, sir. Does it ache a great deal? Yes, sir. But it hasn't ached any since I have been on this soft bed. This soft bed feels good. Oh, yes, sir. So good. So, she was extremely happy because she was, she was laid on this bed. This was a soft bed. Unlike the bed that was in her own house. Isn't it? She was extremely poor. So, she did not have a proper bed with the bedding. So her back used to hurt even more. But now this is a softer bed, that soft bed. That is why she is feeling a little bit better. It is not hurting her anymore. What a satisfaction mingled with gratitude was in her voice. So her voice was mixed with thankfulness as well as a lot of satisfaction. Supper is ready, said Mrs. Thompson, looking into the room a little while afterwards. So soon afterwards, the wife comes in and says that your supper is ready. Joe glanced from his wife's face to that of Maggie. She understood him and answered. So Joe tried to ask in a gesture that what would happen to Maggie? Will she not eat? She can wait until we are done. Then I will bring her something to eat. There was an effort at indifference. That means Joe Thompson's wife was now trying to be indifferent, was trying to show that she was not bothered. But in reality, she was much bothered. But her husband had seen her through the window and understood that the coldness was assumed. She was trying to be cold. She was trying to show that she had no feelings for Maggie. But in reality, she did have a lot of feelings for Maggie. Joe waited after sitting down to the table for his wife to introduce the subject uppermost in both of their thoughts. Uppermost in both of their thoughts means both of them were thinking what would happen to Maggie. But Joe Thompson waited for, her, for his wife to bring up the topic. But she kept silent on that theme for many minutes and he maintained a like reserve. So nobody talked about Maggie at that point. At last she said abruptly, so suddenly, that means she was constantly thinking what would happen to Maggie. Now she suddenly, abruptly means very suddenly, she says, what are you going to do with that child? She asks. I thought you understood me that she was to go to the poor house, replied Joe as if surprised at her question. So he said that, I told you that I'll take, you, take her to the poor house. Mrs. Thompson looked rather strangely at her husband for some moments and then dropped her eyes. Looked rather strangely. What hint do you get from here? That Mrs. Joe Thompson, that means Mrs. Thompson, did not want Maggie to go to the poor house. The subject was not again referred to during the meal. So during their dinner, it was no more discussed. At its close, that means when dinner was complete, Mrs. Thompson toasted a slice of bread, softened it with milk and butter. Adding to this a cup of tea, she took them into Maggie and held the small waiter. What is a waiter? You see this tray with which uh, the tea and the snacks is often served. Okay. So this tray she brought and there was a cup of tea. There was milk and butter. There was a slice of bread also, toasted slice of bread. It was softened with milk and butter. You see the care. She was not just given a slice of bread. Okay, if you have, if you want to have, have. Otherwise, throw it away. No. The, the bread was softened with milk and butter and there was tea also. And it was held and brought to Maggie. On which she had placed them while the hungry child ate with every sign of pleasure. So, this little child who was extremely sick. She ate with a lot of pleasure. Is it good? asked Mrs. Thompson. Seeing with what a keen relish the food was taken. Relish means she was very, she was obviously very hungry and she was eating it with a lot of pleasure. So, Joe Thom Joe, Mrs. Thompson asks her, is it very good? Is it tasty? The child paused with a cup in her hand and answered with a look of gratitude that awoke to new life, old human feelings, which had been slumbering. Slumbering means the emotions. I told you, you know, when you read this chapter, when you read this story, you have to feel like that, that woman who did not have a child. She did not have anybody to care about, to take the responsibility of. 
so suddenly these emotions that were lying sleeping underneath the layers suddenly is awakened okay because of the sweetness of this little child for half a score of years that means for more than 10 years these emotions were lying dead okay or they were sleeping with the coming of this child this was like an angel to her and her husband that suddenly all these emotions the love the respect the feeling for a child the responsibility the care all these suddenly came about we will keep her a day or two longer she is so weak and helpless said mrs jo thompson so he so the woman says that we will keep the child for one or two days she is helpless and she is weak let us feed her and let her be strong then she will go at breakfast time on the next morning that he must step down and see the guardians of the poor for mag so the next morning her husband said that okay i will talk i'll go and talk to the guardians in the poor house but jo thompson's wife now says that no wait a day or two longer and then because she is very weak let her cope up let her be uh, strong again then you give her to the poor house she'll be so much in your way said jo so jo 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 that means the husband said that she is going to disturb you a lot you will have to take care of her a lot do you want that i shan't mind that for a day or two poor thing so i won't mind that let her be here you see slowly the emotions in the lady are growing up she is no more cruel she is no more that inhuman woman okay jo did not see the guardians of the poor on that day on the next day or the day following so jo did not have to go to the guardians of the poor house ever again in fact he never saw them at all on maggie's account for in less than a week that means within a week only what happens is mrs jo thompson would as soon leave thought of taking up her own abode in the arms house as sending maggie there so she grew so fond of maggie that whenever jo thompson told that i'll go to the poor house and leave the child over there she would also decide to go with maggie to the poor house that was the love that had grown between them what light and blessing did that sick and helpless child bring to the home of jo thompson the poor will write it had been the dark and cold and miserable there for a long time just because his wife had nothing to love and care for out of herself and so became sore irritable ill tempered and self afflicting in the desolation of her woman's nature so self afflicting means she was causing pain to herself only she had killed or uh, let them sleep let all her emotions fall asleep or let, or killed them and so she became angry for a long time she did not have any children to care for as i have said her womanly nature her caring nature all these emotions were dead so she was self afflicting she was causing pain to herself she had become irritable she had become ill tempered and now what has happened now the sweetness of the sick child she was like the angel in the house that had brought about that had excavated that have brought alive all those emotions that were lying within looking ever to her in love patience and gratitude was as honey to her soul so it was just like honey it brings sweetness it brings it brought the late, the little child maggie although she was crippled she people thought that she was a waste okay but in reality she brought she was the honey that brought sweetness to the family and and she carried her in her heart as well as in her arms a precious burden so as jo thompson was had carried the little child to her house to his house like a precious burden now jo thompson's wife also understood that in reality maggie was a precious burden as for jo thompson there was not a man in all the neighborhood who drank daily of a more precious wine of life than he an angel had come into his house disguised as a sick helpless and miserable child and filled all its dreary chambers that means all the dull chambers which were colorless which where there was no love no emotion no care all that was filled with the sunshine of love okay by the help of whom by that same helpless sick miserable child maggie okay so we see that slowly amidst all this darkness they were led to the light okay light was what light was maggie and for maggie's life who was the light jo thompson because he was the one who brought maggie to the house who gave maggie if 
Jo Romson had not brought the child to his house. What would have happened to Maggie? He, she might have died in that wretched house, isn't it? Jo Romson was the light or the angel in Maggie's life. Okay, and Maggie got a beautiful life henceforth with them. In the same way, Maggie was the angel to Jo Romson and his wife. Their life, which was without any love, emotion, care, or anything, was filled with delight. Was filled with sunshine because of the girl. Okay. So here we come to an end uh, of the story, and we will have two important things that we will read from here. If you want, if you can write this down also, this is an important question. Two, th these are the two important questions that may come in your exam. You can write them down. Mainly the theme and the title we will do. I have written it here, so you can follow it from here itself. Let us first see what is the significance of the title. The first important point. first important question that may be given in the exam significance of the title or how is the angel disguised in the house the story ends with the writer bestowing the status of an angel on maggie who had come into jo thompson's house disguised as a sick helpless and miserable child who filled all his dreary chambers with the sunshine of love so first of all from this point we come to know that maggie who seemed to be a sick helpless and miserable child nobody wanted to take her to their house because he was a waste she had a wasted form and was a cripple so uh, from this place maggie was taken to the home of joe thompson's uh, to to the jo, to joe thompson's house and over there we realize that maggie was not a burden but she was the real sunshine in that house okay so she was the angel in joe thompson's house you can also add this point that if we note it more more you know deeper if you read deeper into the into the story you will understand that not only maggie proved to be an angel for the childless couple but jo thompson also proved to be no less than an angel for her so jo thompson himself was also an angel to whom to maggie because without him without the help of jo thompson maggie's life would have been a living hell isn't it she would be in that broken down house there would be nobody to take care of her his her brother and sister was also not there so she would have died over there so it is because of jo thompson that maggie survived maggie a bedridden child had lost not only her mother but also her siblings nobody in the village agreed to take in maggie since she could be of no use to them it is even suggested that she should be taken to the poor house because nobody would want to take care of her wan and wasted form so you can see i have made the answer in such a way that wan and wasted form i've quoted the lines if you have xavier pinto you will find it there also you can uh, read uh, this portion two portions that i'll tell you is important do it and that would be enough then you just read the chapter thoroughly so that any questions short questions that may come you can answer them maggie was left all alone and it was angel it was the angel like jo thompson who felt who felt it to be the cruel gesture the writer has presented jo with angel like qualities so jo thompson has also angel like qualities because for him maggie survived then uh, he also mentioned the teachings of bible this you can add and you may not depending on the marks okay this portion just uh, read it if you have any doubt you can ask in the comment section and uh, moreover i'll tell you that if it is a two mark question you can just write that for uh, the the childless family jo thompson's family maggie happened to be the angel in the house with with the presence of whom their lives changed and they were uh, the their house was filled with sunshine house and life was filled with sunshine moreover to maggie jo thompson was the angel because for him she could finally survive and get a better life okay okay now let's move to the next portion see themes what are the themes in the story first theme is selfishness versus selflessness selfishness where do you find selfishness see farmer jones he takes away uh, the boy see the farmer takes in john to look after his farm whereas ellis takes in kate as a maid so you see that these two people take away the boy and the girl without thinking that who would take care of maggie they just take them away so that their purpose can be served they can make these children work for them okay so this is selfishness next we move to 
जो थॉमसन मिस्टर थॉमसन टेक्स मैगी द क्रिपल चाइल्ड आउट ऑफ कम्पैशन सो मिस्टर थॉमसन डिड नॉट टेक मैगी बिकॉज मैगी कुड सर्व एज अ सर्वेंट और और हेल्प देम इन एनी वे ही टुक मैगी जस्ट आउट ऑफ कम्पैशन आउट ऑफ लव he takes her to his own home carrying her like a precious burden and even faces her wife's anger although he knew that he, as soon as he went home he would find his angry wife more angry because of that crippled child brought home even then he took the child to his home okay next point is love as a redeemer who the love is something in a valentines day you get to read this love as a redeemer you see love can cure anything and everything Okay so let's read it the story portrays the redeeming power of love through the character of mrs thompson see mrs thompson was a cruel lady she had no feelings for in anybody she was very selfish okay so jo thompson's wife is hard hearted at the beginning of the story she scorns at her husband for bringing the invalid child home but she is transformed at the end at the end you find her completely changed how did she change love changed his changed her life completely it appears as if the woman had turned bitter earlier because of being childless she had become so cruel why because she had been childless for long she had nobody to love and care but as soon as the love of child touches her she is transformed so as soon as she gets somebody to love and care a child she is totally transformed into a new woman she no longer wishes to send away the child to the poor house but wants to take care of her as a mother she becomes a mother like figure instead of the cruel selfish lady she is no more this you can quote irritable and ill tempered and self afflicting woman but a loving mother like figure you can obviously quote this line you know i can tell you i can assure you that at least you'll get half a mark more because of quoting such appropriate lines okay the love of angel in disguise thus redeems redeems means saves the lady jo thompson's wife okay it was the love of maggie it was the feeling the emotion of love for the young child that changed the life of jo thompson and his wife okay so here we come to an end with this chapter angel in disguise i guess you will be able to understand completely disguise means you know hidden something is hidden in reality you it just in the face of it you don't understand what is the real meaning of it you, nobody understood that uh, maggie who looked so crippled so disfigured and was disabled diseased could be somebody's angel so directly we could not understand but when inward searched isn't it when we looked deeper into it then we realized that yes maggie could be somebody's sunshine so this way she is disguised as an angel clear so uh, here we come to an end and i guess this portion is clear to you if you face any problem you can write it in the comment section i'll tell you for the questions if you have xavier been to i will discuss obviously in my uh, in the other videos that i'll do sooner and uh, if you have at your home xavier pinto you can obviously follow the questions from there those are very important questions you will understand the pattern of questions from there i'll discuss no doubt but if you have you do follow that and uh, thank you so much if you have liked it please like comment and subscribe thank you